Salt Stress in Plants and Adaptation A common and important stress factor in temperate regions besides deserts is high salt concentrations or salinity, which has made millions of acres of land unproductive. A plant faces two problems in such areas. Absorbing water from a soil of negative osmotic potential and another dealing with the high concentrations of potentially toxic ions such as sodium, carbonate, and chloride. The facultative halophytes are particularly interesting. Several such species grow best where salt levels in the soil are high, as in deserts, brackish waters, and sea coasts close to the shores of extremely salty waters such as the Great Salt Lake, where the salt content is as high as 27% by weight. They can also grow in non-salty soils, the following genera include good examples, Orlenrolfi, Iodine Bush, Salicornia, Pickleweed or Samphire, and Limonium, Sea Lavender, Marsh Rosemary. Atriplex, Shadscale, and Sarcobatus, Black Greasewood, also grow in somewhat less salty soils, and certain bacteria and blue-green algae. Halophytes are studied growing naturally in non-salty soils and salty soils. They are not abundant in non-salty soils because they cannot compete with the glycophytes naturally growing there. Some crop plants, example beets, tomatoes, rye, are more salt tolerant than others, example onions, peas. No obligate halophytes have been reported but prokaryotes are the most resistant to environmental salt stress factors, they cannot grow unless the soil is salty. Halobacterium accumulate large amounts of salt in their cells and cannot survive except in salty environments. In terrestrial halophytes, the osmotic potential is minus 3.0 MPa. How do they obtain water? In some cases, the xylem sap does not have a highly negative osmotic potential but may be almost pure water. To obtain water from the surrounding soil, water potential within the xylem must be greatly lower in tension, as demonstrated by Scolander and his co-workers on mangrove trees. In some salt-accumulating halophytes, the osmotic potential continues to become more negative throughout the growing season as salt is absorbed. However, the soil solution is not taken directly into the plant, instead, water moves into the plant osmotically and not simply in bulk, as the endodermal layer in the roots provides the osmotic barrier. In salt regulators halophytes where the concentration of salt within a plant does not increase during the growing season. Often salt does not enter the plant, but the leaves swell by absorbing water, so concentrations decrease. This leads to succulence, a high volume surface ratio, a common morphological feature of halophytes. Sometimes excess salt is exuded on the leaf surface to maintain a constant salt concentration within the tissue. In some halophytes, observable salt glands on the leaves are present, sometimes consisting of only two cells. Although sodium ions are essential for some salt-tolerant species, it is probable that sodium pumps in cell membranes actively transport much of the ion out of the cytoplasm of both root and leaf cells, inwardly to the central vacuoles and outwardly to the extracellular spaces. Nolna mollis, a dominant, succulent shrub of the Atacama Desert grows where rainfall is less than 25 mm. However, high fog and relative humidity of around 80% are common. The plant is almost always wet to the touch. Mune et al., 1980, found that salt glands on the leaves secrete salt, mostly sodium chloride, that absorbs the atmosphere, water hygroscopically. Can the plant use the water absorbed this way on its leaves? Mooney and his co-workers suggest two absorption pathways, 
directly into the leaves or through the roots after the salty solution has dripped onto the ground. Either pathway would require metabolic energy and mechanisms that are not known to exist in plants, although they exist in insects. Large quantities of organic and inorganic materials are leached from the leaves of many plants. Leaching brought about by washing the leaves is caused by removing materials within the tissues and on the surface. Materials washed from the leaves to the soil are recycled back to the plants. Species that absorb large amounts of salt and then lose it either by leaching or by dropping their salt-filled leaves into the soil may considerably increase the salinity of the surface soil. As desert plants profoundly influence the soil they grow in, greasewood, Sarcobatus vermiculatus, in the escalant desert of Utah brought salts from depths, depositing them on the surface, studies revealed. Probably the salts were contained in the leaves and released upon their fall and decay, the result was high salt concentrations beneath the greasewood plants, especially when compared with soluble beneath big sagebrush, Artemisia tridentata, plants. Halophytes synthesize large quantities of proline, amino acids, galactosyl glycerol and organic acids. These compounds function in osmotic adjustment. Another potential problem for plants growing on saline soils is obtaining enough potassium. This is because sodium ions compete with the uptake of potassium ions by a low affinity mechanism, as potassium ions are commonly present in soils in much lower concentrations than sodium. In this respect, the presence of calcium appears to be crucial. If sufficient calcium is present, a high affinity uptake system having a preference for the transport of potassium ions can operate well, and the plants can then obtain sufficient potassium and restrict sodium. Fertilization of some saline soils with calcium ions might increase their agricultural productivity. A favorable effect of calcium on soil structure could also be important. Gypsum is sometimes used, providing both calcium and some acidity, which helps in leaching out the Na. Elemental sulfur is also sometimes applied. It oxidizes to produce sulfuric acid, which aids in leaching. Mm -hmm.